go. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Man, I love the sound of that music. This is Impacting Life 24-7 with your host, C.L. King, coming to you live from the High Definition Studios here. I should start not telling y'all where I'm broadcasting from because maybe then y'all will listen even more. The the mystique of it all. Where is King at today? But ladies and gentlemen, as you guys know, this is my closeout show. This is our closeout show. Greg, I hope you're in the background with us. And uh, this is our Friday. So Monday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday night, I get to dress down. The team lets me dress down on, this is dress down Thursday. And I am really, really excited about what we're going to bring to you tonight. You know, some of y'all have been pivoting and you've been pivoting in a circle. Well, I'm bringing somebody to y'all that's going to help you pivot in a clear direction. After running corporate events for years, Steve went out on his own after six years ago. He did this six years ago. And his mission was to build live events that changed lives. What's up, VP? He poured his life savings into his first event, which got him two total registrants. Brokenhearted and distressed, he went back at, to the drawing board. The lesson here was not about what you know how to do, but how you market it. Steve went on to learn everything he could about marketing, filling events, and selling from the stage. Over the next several years, he was trained by some of the best in the business, including Russell Brunson, Frank Kern, Dan Kennedy, just to name a few. He went on to hold 45, ladies and gentlemen, 45 live events and speak on more than 80 live events worldwide, including Harvard Business Summit. And this is why I get so pumped, because we bring people on this show that are making an impact. You're going to be impacted tonight. Those of you out there trying to find your way in your business, those of you trying to struggle to see, okay, do I can I survive in the virtual marketplace? I brought to you a literal expert, the man, the myth, and legend, Mr. Steve Warner. Welcome, Steve. King, thank you so much. That is the best intro ever. I'm so excited to be here. We, we are going to have so much fun tonight. I, you know, Steve, I'm just telling you, bro, I, I'm, I guess he got my blood pressure up, ladies and gentlemen, in our pre-show. The pre-show went by in like 30 seconds. We gave each other 15. I probably needed another 30 to be with him. Steve, listen, before we get started, I got to make sure that I see where everything is happening. Greg, in our live environment, I know you probably got his website already up, but I just want to make sure that I can see it. Uh, yes, there it is. And so, Steve, before we get into the nuts and bolts of you, what you and I are going to banter about and talk about tonight and help people, tell people how they can connect and contact you. Sure. Um, Facebook Messenger is probably the best. I know you're going to put that in the notes down below. Stephen Philip Warner is my business page. You can also email me at Steve, S-T-E-V-E at reachingmillions.co. That is my email address that will come to my box. Uh, my assistant might read it as well, but you can get stuff there. If you want to know how to give an impactful presentation, death to badwebinars.com will get you a free class, death to badwebinars.com. That's what I got. That's a good one. I love that. Death to badwebinars.com. Greg, you think you can fit all that in the chat, bro? That's powerful. <laughs> I missed that one, man. So uh, Steve at Reaching Millions and, and also the site that I have, Steve, I just want to make sure that uh, I have a shortened version. Steve.how. Yeah, Steve.how. Is that good too? That will work. Okay. So www.steve, S-T-E-V-E dot H-O-W. I bought all the dot hows. Yeah. Like I bought everything I could. <laughs> I love it, ladies and gentlemen. And listen, the, you, the voice that you're hearing, for those of you that are on our podcast, uh, you can. the man is not talking to me on some little Mickey Mouse microphone. Listen at the quality and richness of his voice. This is what I've been trying to tell y'all. We got to step our game up. So I'm joined again in the virtual studios with my friend Steve Werner. And where, where do you hail from, Steve? Well, so that's a long story. I live in Airbnbs. Uh, when I was doing live events, I like... I held live events all over the country and I had a really nice condo in Vail, Colorado, 20 steps from the ski lift. The problem was that I spent less than a hundred days a year there because I was on the road so much. Right. So in 2016, I went on the road full time, started living in Airbnbs. Um, even during COVID during COVID I was in Phoenix, Flagstaff and Sedona. 
And then uh, in March of this year, I came to Reno, which is where I am right now. It smells like a campfire because there are some fires up by Lake Tahoe, but the city is great. Oh man, are you are you're you're not in danger of of any of those approaching your area, right? No, no, no. But it looks like Armageddon outside. I mean, it's like uh, really? foggy and dingy, and it just smells like a campfire. But we're okay. I feel really bad. Lake Tahoe, if you've ever been there, is gorgeous. Probably one of the it's the deepest non man made lake in the world. It's gorgeous, and uh, all the woods around it right now are on fire. So oh we don't have to talk about that though. Yeah, that, that no, that's something, man. It, you, you, you know, when you talk about, I just we just had a moment of silence earlier today, just thinking about all the tragedies that have gone on around the world. And so, again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by my friend and marketing guru, Mr. Steve Warner. And I guess we'll just say he's from he's from out west right now. <laughs> Do you ever come to North Carolina? You ever come this way? Yeah. Um, I was in North Carolina about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. Okay. Uh, we were in, uh, we were in duck. We were in Kerala yeah, I know and, uh, yeah. flew into some airport there. I can't remember Raleigh, Raleigh. Yeah. That's where it's about, flew into. about two hours from me. So, uh, Steve, listen, w- we have so much to get through and we're probably just, just already just get it in your mind that we're going to do some follow-up shows together because I was telling Steve that. You know, for for those of us that had got, you know, force fed into this marketplace, uh, this digital virtual world, we thought we were coming out on the other end. I told him, man, my my live events are picking back up and I'm actually doing some in-person stuff. And I'm like, yeah, this is it. This is behind us. And then, bam, we didn't got hit again. And so what, what I was talking to one of our team members, Danny Smith, um, I said, man, listen, we, we thought this virtual piece was just a moment in time, but really I feel like it's here to stay. What do you feel about that? Uh, so I think, I think moving forward, a couple things are going to happen. We, even once COVID wraps, wraps up and we go back to normal quote, normal, whatever that is. Right. right. Once we go back to that, I think so many people have gotten used to either working from home, attending events from home, a lot of them are going to do that live events. People want live events. We held, um, we held a live event about six weeks ago and the turnout was less than normal still, but the people who were there were so hungry for it. They were like hugging, like we we're all hanging out. They're like, we don't want to go anywhere. We all went to dinner. Then we went and had drinks after dinner. And like, sometimes you do that at an event, right? Even as a speaker, it was my event. Um, (laughs) even as a speaker, I was like, yeah, let's go have some more drinks. So it's like midnight and I got to be back there at 7 AM to get the whole party started again. (laughs) And I was like, well, I guess this is how we're going. But what I think is going to happen moving forward, I think we will still have the live events. I think the people that want to come to them will still come, but Mm -hmm. some percentage, maybe 20%, maybe 30% will stay at home. They're they don't, they're not going to want to get on a plane. They have kids, they have a life, they have all the stuff going on. They're going to still attend. They'll still buy the ticket. But I think moving forward, hybrid events, virtual and live will be a much bigger thing. And then I think smaller live events for like, your really like high ticket, super consumer type, like they want it right. Because it's going to be a luxury, but what you can do is you can build it smaller Um, Tony Robbins did this, uh, if you've been watching his stuff. Mm -hmm. So like platinum, his high end group, he did, he still did a live event. You could come, but it was, I want to say it was 20 or $25,000 if I remember correctly. So it's not cheap, but chains for Greg Smith, but not for me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, there, anyone in platinum, platinum is a hundred thousand dollars to be part of, right? They're going to spend the money. They got their own. So the way they set it up, if you've been to a meeting hall, they each got their own eight foot table with a ventilation system. (laughs) Like, I mean, it was set up, but that's what you had to do, but people still paid for it. So I think we'll see that, that model continue into the future. I could be wrong, but that's, I think so many people are just used to doing the live events. If you look in like a parallel, as far as the job market, I think. 50% 50% of jobs are now going to be work from home, at least part-time. Yes. And, and I can see that. I see that in many people and entities that I work with. Uh, Steve, before we get to the commercial break, man, give us kind of a layout so we can come back and unpack this more. You were, you were in the corporate world and mm-hmm. what caused you to, to leave the corporate world? Well, um, when I was in college, 
I had started a business. I did well, but I got super burned out. I was in college full time. I was working a gazillion hours. So I sold it, graduated, traveled for two years. I ended up working in the restaurant industry. I thought I was going to be a bartender. I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm chilling. I've got some money in the bank. Like, um, but I can't, I'm not the kind of person that can just be an employee. So I ended up running that place. Then I got headhunted to run, uh, a large fine dining program in Colorado. So I was out there and I woke up one day, I'd been doing it for about five years. And I woke up and I was like, how the f did I get here? Like, this was not the plan for my life. As much as I like it, this is not my plan. I said, what do I want to do? And I'd gone to a Tony Robbins event uh, in 2013. And I was like, I, that's what got me thinking. I was like, I want to be on stages. I've done a few, like I had spoke on a few stages in college, talked about entrepreneurship. And I was like, you know what? That's what I want to do. I'm sure I can figure it out. So like anyone, I just quit my job and jumped in. I moved to Las Vegas. Um, I was like, I'm going to make this work. And I spent about $35,000 trying to hold my first event for 2,000 people. Uh, it was the Treasure Island Ballroom. It actually held 1,800. Mm. And um, I spent every penny I had trying to fill that room. And I got two people to buy. And that's when I realized it wasn't about like me speaking on stage. It was about being able to sell because you have to put people, you have to put butts in seats, right? Right. right. Um, so from there, I, uh, I had really good friends in Vegas that to this day are still great friends of mine. They let me move into their utility room. A uh, little eight foot by five foot room. They said, it's yours as long as you take action. Because at this point, I was, it was actually hard. I mean, maybe you've had this, oh, yeah. I don't know your backstory, but the universe started testing me because I started getting headhunting offers to go back into the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. um, like I had, I had one offer on the table for 125 a year mm. to go manage a restaurant. And like I'm sitting there with like literally 300 bucks in my pocket, living in a utility room with a washer and dryer. And like, what do I want to do? And my friends, my friends said like, Hey, you can stay here as long as you keep taking action towards moving forward. Mm. We will, you're okay to stay here. Like they weren't, they weren't pressing me too hard, but they were like, you got to continue to work. So I went to the library. I'm an avid reader. Um, I've always been a reader. I, I, we actually burned my television in 2000 for okay. Y2K. Smart move. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I haven't had a TV since. So. I like to read. I grew up with two parents that were teachers, um, encouraged me to read. So I went to the library and I checked out pretty much the entire marketing department and just started tearing through books on marketing. Um, and I ended up going to South Point Casino and I talked them into letting me reserve a room um, on a credit card that they didn't actually run because if they would have ran it, it was maxed out. Um, but I gave them the credit card to right. hold uh, so it was a small room. The room held 50 to 60 people. Uh, we actually, and it took me six weeks. I sold out the room. I oversold it. I sold 80 seats um, mm -hmm. to that event. And that kind of started like the slow snowball moving forward. Right. Um, by the end of the first year, I had held three events. I cleared about $40,000, which, I mean, you know how events go. That, I mean, it, that's good in a utility room, I guess. Yeah, that's, I mean, right, right. it started moving, but right. then the second year, the second year we hit over 200 um, and really started to get things rolling. And I learned Dan Kennedy was my first mentor. If you don't know who Dan is, if you Google him, he's like bad Santa meets rock star marketer. Mm -hmm. um, he was responsible if you ever got those chain letters in the 80s, yep. uh, not chain letters, but like long form sales letter, like a 20 page letter selling you a $92, he would call it a, a what was his name? Wit, not a widget, a uh, Duma fludge. Yeah. That was Dan Kennedy, but he's yeah. grumpy old man. But he said, like, I went to see him, right? I was so excited. I was making some money. And he was like, you're an idiot. He like, I paid 200 bucks to sit at his lunch table. And he's like, you're an idiot. When I told him my story and I was like, what? He was like, you have the whole reason you, you want to be on stage and hold an event is to sell something. You either, there are two ways you make a living as a speaker. I mean, you know this, you either take path A, which is get paid to be on stage and you're getting paid for your knowledge, your entertainment value, right. or you build the event or pay to be on stage and you sell something at the back of the room. Mm -hmm. And Dan said, well, how much, how much did you make at your last event? And I said, well, we cleared about when it was all said and done net profit about 20, 22, 23,000. 
And he said, well, my last event, we sold 1.4 million from stage. <laughs> so which would you rather have? And I, I said, well, I, I was sitting there and he was like, the answer is B dummy. Right. right yeah. And I was like, okay. So I was like, I don't have anything to sell. What do I sell? And he's like, I have a whole table of stuff over there. Pick one. And I was like, you're going to give it to me. He's like, no, you have to buy it. But he's like, everyone that you sell, I'll give you 40% of the sale price. So I started selling the next event we held. I sold one of his $2,000 products for every one that we sold. I made $800 that event. We cleared over hundred K really. Woo, man, ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 my ears are on fire. Uh, I'm, I'm joined in our virtual studios by Steve Warner. You can find him at, uh, let me get the, the easier website for, so I can remember, cause he owns them all the dot house. Just go to Steve dot how to connect with my friend. He is a, I'm just telling you, you're going to be blessed tonight. Uh, on our show to especially all of our entrepreneurs. We have a whole host of entrepreneurs. I'm going to share this with you guys, uh, because you because some people are frustrated and he's going to help us walk through a couple different elements i.e speaking storytelling uh hosting events how you know the anatomy behind those that that's really 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 important but before we come before we get to that point you got to stay with us because you got to hear a word from our sponsors it won't take you it won't take us but about a couple minutes all right here we go we have got to tell you about our amazing sponsors on Impact Your Life 24-7 because they help us reach the world every single day. Michelle Perry is the host of the Successful Diligence podcast and best-selling author of The Pebble in My Shoe. You can connect with Michelle and get a copy of her book at SuccessfulDiligence.com. We're thankful that she is a gold sponsor. Paula Cousone is a gold sponsor, and she has dedicated her life to volunteering in community youth programs such as the Young Marines. Paula believes that the greatest asset each young person has is at least one caring adult in their life. Gregory Smith, he is a platinum sponsor. He is the author of 100 Simple Ways, How to Manage a Property and Evidence Room. Get your copy of his book today by reaching out to Gregory Smith on Facebook or email him at smithg1963 at yahoo.com. Adrian Barker, she is a platinum sponsor and she is the host of the Adrian Barker Speaks podcast. She is a life coach and CEO of Professional Global Etiquette. Please connect with Adrian at professionalglobaletiquette.com. Mr. Mike Black is a platinum sponsor from New Bern, North Carolina. Mike helps men throughout Eastern Carolina find and lead a faith-filled life. He is also the co-host of Impacting Life 24-7. He is a compassionate leader in his church and a devoted father and husband. Dr. Nate Dunlap Jr. is a platinum sponsor and he is the executive director of the PRF Institute. He is the author of What's Next? Preparing for Eternity and Don't Leave Me Like This, Inspiration to Leave a Legacy. As a 501c3 nonprofit organization, the PRF Institute is blessed to be that premier stewardship-based teaching ministry that truly responds to the needs of families and communities around the country. Find Dr. Dunlap and his amazing team at prfinstitute.org. Poet Katrina McCain, she is the author of Because She Decided to Love. This is a collection of poetry and prose about how love has impact on every relationship. Paul Katrina McCain is a platinum sponsor and this book that she has detailed for us is a raw and uncut poetry ensemble that addresses themes of how we express love through loss, hurt, pain, and grief. Connect with her at poetkatrinamccain.com. If you'd like to become a sponsor of Impacting Life 24-7, it's very simple. Just go to clkingspeaker.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, go to clkingspeaker.com. This is Impact Life 24-7. So thankful for our sponsors who help us uh, in this mission of impacting one life one day at a time. And it pr provides the platform for us to do exactly what we're doing here tonight. And that is hosting a world-class man with a hat that is killer. You got to get me one of those hats, my friend. Clarity speaks volumes. Steve Warner, you can go to Steve 
dot how am i right there because i i didn't took you my are. screen down okay steve dot how that it's got to be it can't be any easier than that uh connect with him he is a marketing branding uh planning facilitator speaker and what i asked him to do tonight is is help us unpack some things that i know that people are struggling with so steve you you told us how you kind of got started and that first event that you did where you only booked a couple folks uh, that discouragement level i mean did that was that fuel to get you going harder or did you feel absolutely deflated a little bit of both um so the day that i had to cancel the event right i went down to treasure island and i remember like we got there i got there early and what happened is i mean you know this from holding events they give you a room block and so i had a hundred hotel rooms that i was on the hook for at a hundred hotel rooms, I had a 25 K food and beverage package. And she called me and we were four weeks before the event. And she said, Hey, I just want to let you know, like nobody has booked one of your hotel rooms. What's going on. And I was like, Oh gosh, like oh, they're, down not... at the, they're down at the red roof Inn." <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is not, I mean, I've got two people registered. I just didn't think they were going to know. I didn't, I was like, I was feeling that crunch. And I was like, I gotta go down and tell her. So I went down. And I had a discussion and I said, look, the, I, I'm just going to be real honest. I thought I could fill it. I can't. Um, you can, I was like, your options are you can sue me and I will file bankruptcy and you won't get anything. Or you can keep my $5,000 that I already gave you down and we'll call it a wash. And she was like, well, I have to talk to my boss, like we're a casino. Like, I was like, I just hope they don't you know, drag me outside and like break my knees or something. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Tony Santana was going to come and take care of you, buddy. <laughs> right. I was like, man, um, but she, she let me out of it. So I went down. Um, I was actually, we went down to the frog bar. If you're familiar with treasure Island, it's like right off the, the side. And I remember there was a lady that was playing craps behind me and she was screaming and yelling because she was winning all this money. And like, I was like, what do I want to do? And that at the time I was, uh, I was 36. And I was like, I mean, I have, I was like, you know, the restaurant, and this is what I told myself when I left the restaurant, those jobs will always be there. Like maybe when I'm 60, 65, like I might not be young enough, like powerful enough, might not have my druthers to, to make something like that work. But I was like, you know what, right now I do. And the upside from it, being an entrepreneur has, if you can stick to the game, and you can stay in the game for five or six years, you will make more than the person that is in corporate America. But it's a, it, there, I'm not saying that it's sugar-coated and it's, it is dangerous because if you don't make it, you end up with a lot of debt, a lot of heartache, and you're broken a little bit. But you can still go back to the real world. And I said, you know, that's my friends offered the utility room. I said, you know what, that's fine. And I, what I did was I gave myself a year. I said, I will stay here for a year. If I can make one event work, yeah, I know if I can do one, like it's baby steps. Everything in life is baby steps. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right. So I was like, if I can, if I can figure out how to do it once, I can then grow on that. And I know I can do it again. And how can I then take the next step? I think the biggest challenge I see facing entrepreneurs right now, um, I had this discussion last week with a client. Mm -hmm. She, she said, you know, I've, I've been in this game for a year and I'm making $40,000. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, okay. Did you go to college? She said, yeah. I said, okay. So you got out of college. How much did you make? She was a teacher. And she, she said, you know, my first year out, I made 37,000. I said, how much did you make your fifth year? She was like, maybe 45, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was like, how much do you make 10 years in? She, she was a teacher for 12 years. She's like, when I left teaching, I was making 58,000. All right. And I said, well, okay. So you went to school for five years right. to do that. Why do you think that you would start being an entrepreneur and in your first year make more than you made after teaching for 12 years after going to school? I said, the difference is the timeline's the same, right? First 10 years, you're going to have your head down. You're going to be working. You're probably going to make, I don't know, let's say you make 80K a year. Like I was like, you're, you're making 40 right now, which is more than you made one year after being a teacher. Right. If you stick with it, the thing is pretty much every job, 
99% of jobs are going to cap out at 100, maybe 120. Right. There are some jobs you can get they'll pay more, but average income in the U.S. is $68,000. That's right. If you can stick with being an entrepreneur for six years, you will make more than that because the upside to being an entrepreneur is uncapped. Once you right. own a business right. and you start and you figure it out, right? That's really what the game of entrepreneurship is. I don't care what you're selling. You can be selling a widget online. You can be selling services. You can be a consultant, whatever you're doing. Once you figure it out, and if you haven't read the e-myth, the e-myth is what I mean by figure it out. It should be really clear. It is pulling yourself out of the business so that you are not a plumber who just works as a plumber is really self-employed. He still has that cap. But once you learn marketing, once you learn sales and you pull yourself out of the business enough that the business starts to build a huge snowball over here, you make more money. Mm, now, man, I, 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 I can't leave with after that point because that really has sparked my interest. When you say pull yourself out, what does that mean? So, OK, if we're let's just go back to plumber, electrician, right. uh, we could say a consultant even right. A consultant is when you are trading. What I mean by pull yourself out is if you are trading time for dollars, you are going to reach a cap. Ah. If you hire somebody to do stuff under you, so if the plumber pulls himself out enough and hires plumbers to work under him and becomes a business owner, he is now uncapped in his income potential. Right. Right. Now, this takes growth. This takes doing stuff. And you're probably saying, how does this relate to speaking? Oh, well, yeah. speaking, at the end of the day, if you are just getting paid to be on stage, you can make a very good living. Mm -hmm. You can make 250 to a million pretty pretty good once you've been doing it for a little while. Right. And of course, as you guys know, I'm knocking on the door of that. So go ahead, Steve. <laughs> well, that's No, I mean, that's perfect. I mean, that's... I'm, <laughs> I'm teasing, if, man. Oh, okay. If you're, I mean, most people that I know that do speaking do pretty right. well. Right. The way that you unplug yourself in your speaking business, one, you have somebody going out looking for speaking gigs for you. That is a job that costs $15 to $20 an hour. You can have somebody booking, doing all the follow-up, doing all of that stuff. Number two, you sell something on the back end. So it doesn't have to be selling at the event. We talked about this a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to drive people to the back of the room, but as a speaker who speaks on stages, people know, like, and trust you instantly. They're connecting with you because you're in front of them. You're not somebody that's on TV. You're not somebody that's online. You're not somebody that they're reading a book. You are in front of them. They know, like, and trust you. If you sell them something on the back end, a lot of speakers have a book. The good speakers have a book and a program and a high-end program. Mm. If you send people through that, I have a, I have a mastermind right now that's $25,000. How many people do I have to put in that and serve to make a million dollars? 35. Oh, you're asking me to do the math. I'm just like- I'm Oh, you're fine. <laughs> but I mean, like, think right. about- So you said 25K. Yeah, it's 35 you, people. Right, right, okay. If I speak in front of 35,000, that's one person per thousand that has to ascend to that level. Do you think, I mean, I, I'm, this is all numbers right. and I know a lot of people out there are like, how do I even get there? Start speaking, just start going and speaking. Like we're going to get into the whole right. speaking right. here in a second, but the go like, don't, I want you to forget that I said a million dollars. I want you to think of 50,000. 75,000, replace the income. How, how much better would your life be if instead of getting up, sitting down in a computer and doing whatever you do for work right now, how much better would your life be if you got up, shared your message with somebody, drank some coffee and talked to people you like talking to mm -hmm. and got paid the same amount of money? Don't focus on a million dollars. That's where everybody gets heartbroken. The lady I was talking about last week, that's where she was heartbroken. If she would just focus on replacing her $65,000 a year teaching job with a job that she liked doing, you'll eventually double that income, triple that income and go up. Man, ladies and gentlemen, I, I just, I, whew, my goodness, man, my head is on fire because it's <laughs> not, not because it's complicated, but be, one of the things that I took away from there and you guys will 
I hope you picked it up. He he talked about the staying or the resiliency or staying the course. And you, you got to give yourself some grace in that, in that season, because, you know, a lot of times people like, like Steve, you know, you were in the corporate world and you get out and you expect, you know, corporate money after your first couple events or your first even year and you're, and you're not seeing it. And then people get frustrated and they, they, you know, Steve, I, you probably know this and probably have in, envisioned this, that there are so many people working in jobs that they're not happy with. They have dreams and visions of doing something else, but because of the security of the job, they never, they never leave. Golden handcuffs, golden handcuffs. So the, I mean, absolutely the, my advice to anyone doing that, and th this takes like, you got to dig you, this is okay. I'm going to start somewhere different, but stay with me. Okay. I want you to picture a sliding scale at the bottom is a zero at the top is a 10. This is a success in life. I'm on fire. 10 is I am jazzed. I get out of bed. I'm excited. I can't wait to meet the day. Man. One is I I'm like just about ready to flatline. <laughs> yeah. I'm like in pain and suffering. Right. <laughs> so this is, there have been several studies done on this. Most people, if you're at between a four and an eight, four, five, six, seven, you're, you're in mediocrity, right? Like you're in the mediocre stage. Like you're a five, you're not happy. You're not thrilled with life, but you're not in enough pain to change. You're not hurting enough. You come home, you probably go to the bar, you have a couple drinks, maybe you smoke some weed, like you relax, but you're like, you play video games, right? People right. play video games or they're in like, some other world they watch, they binge watch five hours of TV a day because they're trying to, I need to relax. I need to not, I need to not do that thing over there. One of my friend's mom came home every night and she would drink a bottle of wine, like a bottle of wine, watching QVC playing candy crush. <laughs> right. And I'm like, and she's, I like, you know, that people right. are like this. So right. they're at like right. that four five, six, like they're not in enough pain. The right. people who hit an eight or a nine, that's like your like Mark Cuban, Gary Vanderchuk, like they've hit the peak and they're so jazzed. They are never going to let themselves fall into, they might hit a seven once in a while, but they're never going to be down at like a five because entrepreneurs, what I found, did you watch a, uh, are you a basketball fan? I, I am of course, Golden State Warriors is the only basketball team in the world, but go ahead. Did you watch, did you watch uh, the last dance? Michael Jordan? I, did. I surely did. Watched every episode. Oh my goodness. Such a good show. So I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I am a fan of excellence. Yes. And what Michael Jordan said, and everybody that I've interviewed on my podcast, we've had like all successful entrepreneurs. We want the ball, like the last second of the game. Yeah, I remember we, that. Yep, yep. we want the ball. Like we want that pressure because that like, we know we can handle it, whether we win or lose in that second doesn't matter, but I'm not going to trust anyone else to do it. Right. And that's like, that's the Gary Vanderchuk. That's the Mark Cubans. That's the Mr. Wonderful. Like yeah. they're at a, the, an eight, nine or 10 and they want that. And like, if they ever start to fall down, they find a place to put pressure on themselves to perform better. If you remember Michael Jordan made up stories in his head about his opponents talking trash about him. Mm -hmm because it drove him so hard. Like to me, that's, I mean, I, like I, half of me applauds that and half of me is like, even that's a little bit crazy, bro. It's like my God, it kidney. <laughs> right. I mean, he was, he was playing quarters, like pit, like pitching quarters against right. the wall in the locker room with his security guards for 20 bucks. This is a guy that's worth a billion dollars with right. a B and he wouldn't let them win. He was, he was like, I'm going to break them. I'm going to take every, he's I'm saying gonna, this to the camera. Right. I'm going to take every penny they have because I'm, I am the best at pitching quarters. Like what? 
Well, see, and what 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 we're going to talk about when we get back, ladies and gentlemen. I told you this show was going to be too short for for the <laughs> the amount of volume that Steve Warner brings. You can find him at Steve dot how. I'm telling you what he has he has really changed. Even just in my short amount of time with him, the first time I met him, I was at the pool side <laughs> in our pre interview. <laughs> I said, Steve, I promise you, I'm a professional, man. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> um, but but really, just thinking about okay you know, immediate results versus long-term versus what work do I need to put in? How can, how can I really f- set myself up for success? And, and, uh, Steve, I'm telling you what, brother, you are, you are speaking the language that, that this, the people on this and our audience want to hear. Now, one of the things that, that people say is, well, why do you do a live component of the show? Cause it is a podcast. And I, I don't get caught up in anymore. I used to, I used to freak out about the Facebook live numbers, bro. Uh, and I know Facebook algorithms are all different and all that kind of stuff. And I used to get depressed if I didn't see, but I said, I wanted to have a live component of the show because I wanted to feel that pressure. Like, you know, in a, in a studio yeah. version, you can just go back and edit and fix it and all that. We don't, that's not here. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. when we're finished, Steve gets the final package and I'm just like, there is pressure associated with this because I'm always messing it up. I'm going to share our screen real quick for those of you watching live. And uh, the reason why we do that is because we wanted, I forgot to share it the first time. Steve got me all jacked up and uh, we're going to, we're going to share with you uh, the second half about our sponsors and then we'll get right back to Steve. Every time you hear Impacting Life 24-7, it is brought to you in part by our amazing sponsors. Donald Skip Mondragon II MD is a platinum sponsor, and he is a 26-year Army veteran, national veterans wrestling champion, a speaker, and author. He is the author of Wrestling Depression is Not for Wimps, Lessons Learned from an Amateur Wrestler's Fight to Triumph Over Depression. Contact him and book him today at WrestlingIsNotForWimps.com. The Underdog Ninja Foundation are platinum sponsors. This was founded in 2020 by Javi and Jessica Madrigal, a husband and wife team that have been battling and overcoming heart disease for 18 years. Their personal story and experiences have led them to follow the calling of empowering, educating, and supporting those fighting heart disease. They have a remarkable platform and a dynamic story. Contact this amazing team at underdogninja.org. Belinda Tyson Linder has spent decades investing in people from all different backgrounds. She is a platinum sponsor. She has led inner city programs for disadvantaged youth, as well as being a mentor to young adults, married couples, individuals facing adversity. Belinda and her husband have built multiple six and seven figure businesses and have trained leaders on having tenacity and character. Ultimately, Belinda cares about people. Bettina Carey is a platinum sponsor. Bettina Carey is a four foot nine and a half Latina. She inspires and empowers women to create big results. They break through, no, they shatter their earning ceiling, kick self-imposed limitations to the curb, and live their legacies now. Whether she's coaching from a live or virtual stage or conferencing with a small cohort of bold women or men on the rise across from a conference table, her championship strategies and straight talk compel women and men to find their whole new gear and succeed beyond their wildest imaginations. Connect with Bettina today at weempoweryourlife.com. You've heard it here, folks. All of these people help us with Impacting Life 24-7. If you would like to join them, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to clkingspeaker.com. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, just go to clkingspeaker.com if you want to connect with us. And I am joined by this dude is just blowing my mind today, Steve Werner. I'm so thankful that he's taking time out of his very, very busy schedule. Uh, High demand speaker, high demand coach, trainer, leader in that industry. 
And so let's just let's just dive right into it, Steve. If you want to connect with him, I'm asking everybody that listens to the show, whether you listen to our podcast on the 27 different platforms and or you're watching us live, go to Steve dot how. And, and he's got some really free, cool ways to connect with him. Man, I'm telling you, I, I've already I already signed up for some of the stuff. Tell us about a couple of those things real quick, Steve, before I forget. I, I know you I, I have them in front of me if you don't have them. Sure. No problem. I got them. Um, okay. The first one is death to bad webinars.com. If you're trying to hold webinars, if you are doing trainings online and you want to know how to get people more engaged, if you want to have people pay attention to you and you want to sell something at the end, it is a five part free course. So it is five videos, five worksheets, and three templates to help you get started with webinars, help you crank up the aperture on your webinars. The other one that I have for you is the story selling blueprint. So sales is a really interesting thing, right? One of the things I hear all the time is I, I want to sell stuff, but I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to push onto people. So the story selling blueprint, it is story selling dot how, remember I told you about all the hows. You bought all the hows, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, story selling dot how that is a three part free template that will show you how to build stories that frame your services so that people understand what you do, see you as the authority and lean in before you ever make an offer to them. Mm. Now stories. Let's break, let's, let's unpack that. What, what, how do you help someone frame? Well, let, let me ask a couple different, let me ask this a couple different ways. What would you consider a bad story or a bad way to deliver it? Yeah, sure. Um, first off people love, like if you've ever been at a cocktail party and you're like walking around and you see a realtor come up to you, you know, they're a realtor, you can like smell their realtor. And then they start <laughs> right off and they either tell you like, Hey, do you have a house for sale? Or, Hey, let me tell you about this person who sold their house and blah, 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 blah. blah. And you're like, Oh my goodness. Like here, hold my drink. I'm running. <laughs> um, the things that make a bad story. So the first one that makes a bad story is not using descriptions. Think about Stephen King, or think about your favorite author, think about your favorite movie. Mm -hmm. The best movies have great characters and great environments. If you look at books, books always start off as descriptive, right? So if we go back to my story, I was sitting at the bar in Treasure Island. I had a half drank Manhattan in front of me. I had a melted hot fudge sundae that was dripping off the side of the plate. I could hear some lady behind me screaming and she's throwing the dice. She's winning thousands of dollars. At least she sounds like she is. And then I can hear the slot machines, ching, ching, ching. Like you guys are transported there with me. That is the start of a great story. Every chapter in any great book starts with descriptions because it brings people in. But a lot of people tell stories, they make them really short because there's no drama. They don't add in any curiosity. They don't add in descriptions. So curiosity, pain points, descriptions. Those are the first three things that make a great story. Those are like your bread, flour, water, when you're mixing up some muffins. Oh, that's powerful, man. Do you, do you, do you teach this in a, in a, in a, a more one-on-one uh, -on -one session? I do. Um, so I, I actually hold workshops on this, uh, every other month. Um, so if you go to ultimateofferworkshop.com, you will see we have one coming up in, that is not the dot how, um, <laughs> that is coming up in October. Um, I do. So I do a workshop and my one-on-one -on -one clients. So a good webinar or a good stage presentation, they're, they're interchangeable. I, the reason that I'm good at webinars is because I took what we did on the stage and I modded it just a little bit to make it fit online better. A good stage presentation. If you're on stage for an hour, you should have at least 20 stories mm. in your presentation. Some of them are really short. Some of them are 30 seconds, but you should have their three major ones that you need. So the first one is your hero's journey story. This is how you earned it or learned it. You guys know mine because I shared it with you before the break. I went to a Tony Robbins event. I felt like my life was not going in the direction that I wanted it to. I quit my job. I moved to Las Vegas. I tried to hold an event. Failed pretty miserably. Like that's my hero's journey. You guys know that story. Right. Um, so everybody needs a good hero's journey story. The second one is you need parables. Mm -hmm. So parables 
I mean, if you know the Bible, the right. Bible I is do. the it's the full of parables. Right. Why has it withstood through the ages over and over? I mean, besides being the word of God, it's parables. People can easily relate to every one of the parables and see the lesson in it. So when you, if we, uh, being in Western culture, if we tell somebody something, hey, bro, you need to lose weight. What? <laughs> you get like the nice finger, right? Like you get, you get walls going up all over the place, but even, even a little bit different, even if you know you need something, mm -hmm. right? You could be looking, what happens when you walk into a store, right? We haven't walked into a store in a while, but you walk into a clothing store, what happens? Somebody comes up to you. Hey, can I help you out with anything? No, no, no. I'm good, man. Even if you want to buy something, you might be looking for a size XL and you can't find it and they come up and talk to you. No, no, no. I'm good. Right. So the minute you tell somebody something, see, that's a story. Just in case you guys didn't catch this, I'm going right. to step out of the thing. That right there, that's a 30 second little parable story that frames what I'm teaching. Um, let me just interject real quick. Cause man, you yeah. got my, my, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, there is virtually a hamster running around inside my brain trying to make this thing slow down because the, the Steve got me all, all fired up about really, I might just revamp my whole self after tonight talking to Steve Werner, Steve uh, dot how is how you connect with him. He talked about parables and I have always, uh, I, I can't remember. I've, we've lost count upwards around 300 speeches. I have always used something as the backdrop. I just gave a keynote speech. Uh, every Monday, we try to do something motivational. Mm -hmm. and so I gave a keynote speech about the uh, the arch. And there was this place in uh, this blue hole in Egypt. And why so many people die is because they're lured to the arch. And that was the title of my speech, but the arch was not actually the arch. The arch, uh, I was talking to young people about the lure of drugs. And, and they couldn't they couldn't help it. So many divers went down there. They thought they could make it. They thought they could do it. They, they had enough air and it always caught them by surprise. And 200 people have died there. So parables are powerful. And you just see, he affirmed, ladies and gentlemen, that King halfway knows what he's doing parables are powerful when you're trying to connect with people. One other thing that I, I know I'm just all over the place, but listen to me, you told, I seen on your website where you said people who uh, introduce themselves and they give all of their credentials. That's an immediate turnoff, correct? Immediately, immediately. <laughs> Cause if you, okay, you walk up to somebody, I mean, I, I don't know if you're listening to this, you've probably done a networking event online sometime in the last year. Right. And what happens? You get in the room, there's four of you, there's six of you. You're all supposed to have a minute to talk about who you are, what you do. Right. And there's that person that they start talking and they're like, I'm amazing. I do this. I do that. I went to this school. Their time is up and they just keep talking and somebody's trying to mute them and they're just blah, 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 blah. Do you want to do anything with them? No, mm -mm. absolutely not. So the thing that I say, like when you first meet somebody, they're asking themselves three questions. What does this person want? Are they, is it somebody that I want to interact with? Those are like the two big ones, right? What, why am I here? Even in a networking group, you're like, even you're more like, do I really want to give this person any time? Right. And if you start right away talking about yourself and your credentials, mm. people are, it's just Western culture. We're like, eh. It's the same way when you try to tell somebody something, a wall goes up. But if you tell a story or if you ask them a question that engages them, you have now done what's called a state break and you've pulled them out of their bubble and got them out of being worried, right? Back in the day, I mean, King, did, when you were growing up, did you used to have telemarketers call the house on like, a, like 7 p.m., right? The phone would ring, you yeah. pick it up. And like, they'd be trying to sell. I, I took all those calls. My mom hated it. Right, oh no, right, don't right. answer the phone. Uh, like, but it's, yep. <laughs> it's ringing. I'm going to answer it. And they, they would start, they would never start with, Hey, this is bill from at and I'm calling to sell you long distance right. because what would you do? Click. Up, right. <laughs> right. It said, Hey, how was your day? What'd you have for dinner? Like they start asking questions. So if you're in a networking group or if you're on stage, if you're on stage, start with a story. 100% give a testimonial 
of some, like start with your story, start with a testimonial of somebody who got the result that your audience wants, that gets them excited because they're like, oh my goodness, this person helped that person get what I want. It, it works really, really well for coaches. Um, the other thing, when you're networking, what's in it? They're there asking, what is in it for me? Like, what is in it for me, the listener? If I'm in a Zoom room, I'm probably going to be really selfish about like, I want my turn. I want my turn. Right. And if when somebody else is talking, I'm like, well, what's in it for me? Right. So I start mine really easily. You've heard mine. I, I say, hey, guys, what's going on? Who in here has been on a webinar in the last six months? <laughs> Everybody raises their hand. And then I say, who in here has fallen asleep on a webinar in the last six months? Well, my name's Steve Warner. In the last six months, I've helped more than 22 entrepreneurs build webinars that engage people. And we've done more than 3.8 million in cumulative sales. If you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer them. For you. Oh, oh, oh. And I hold up the mic and I say, mic drop. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, but what did I do? I right, mean, I agree right. and I appreciate, right. I appreciate it. But like I, in 90 seconds, I have the four or six people in the room asking me rapid fire questions. Yeah. How'd you do that? How do you get people to your webinars? What should I do for my webinar? Should the webinar be pre-recorded? Should it be longer? Should it be shorter? And well, what do you think happens when I have people rapid firing questions? Do you think I answer them? You drive them to an, another place. Exactly. Yeah. Answer one or two. And you know what, guys, my time is just about up. I don't want to be rude. I don't want to step on your toes. Right. Um, here's my email. Here's my Calendly link. Let's just go ahead and we'll jump on a 20 minute call. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. I'll be happy to walk you through anything you need help with. It works so well to fill up my calendar. I know this is, this has nothing to do with public speaking. It's okay, brother. I'm I, but I'm rich. It, it works so well. Like that's, so think about that. It's not, if I led with, I mean, I could probably lead with, you know, I've helped 22 entrepreneurs in the last six months build a webinar that has done millions of dollars. That's going to get some interest, but what, what's the first thing that happens when somebody tells you something, your brain starts to ask questions. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, well, is this person telling me the truth? Do I believe that? Is that going to help me? I bet he works with people that aren't like me. I'm a health coach. I bet he only helps bankers, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Like it's all the excuses because that's what we're trained to do. Subconsciously, as we grow up as a protection device, we ask questions that discount things, right? They're protection questions. When you lead with something that does a state break, it's honestly, this goes back to Tony Robbins. Have you ever been to a Tony Robbins event? I've watched them. I haven't been yet. Okay. So one, as soon as this is over, hit me up. I will take you to an event. Yes, Give sir. my word. We'll do it, I'll, brother. I will take you. The, um, I try to buy a ticket for everybody every year because um, it's been so powerful in my life. He does state breaks every eight minutes. He makes you get up, you jump around, you give the person next to you a massage because it keeps you engaged in what he is doing. Right. And that's the same thing that you're doing here. Like state breaks, describing something. If I break right now and I'm like, oh my God, it is so smoky outside. Like it's dingy. I can hardly see anything. And it smells like a campfire. You're all like, what? Yeah. Now you're, you're listening right, right. now. I just okay. go, I can go right back in to talking about speaking. Now, let me, man, I, oh, Lord, have mercy, guys. Could you believe it's 925, Greg? Greg says, this is amazing. I'll be watching this over and over. I've tagged a couple speakers that that uh, that I collaborate with and uh, Art and uh, Art Patrice. I want you guys to really go back and listen to this. This this gentleman, my and connect with him, please. Steve Warner, all you got to go is to steve.how. An amazing, amazing, uh, listen, I've been speaking for, I, I can't even remember how long I've been, and I don't usually get wild by other speakers, until today so you did your job steve and 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 one thing that i would like to do it, it, let's try to pull this out man we got like six minutes we might can go over a few that elevator speech you know that because you, you kind of were describing that a little bit like if you're in a room or if you get an opportunity you you know what i'm saying that let's say yeah. you're not the main speaker at an event right and I struggled with this early on in my in my speaking career because I was so intimidated. Like if I would talk to a superintendent, you know, these are educated folks and you want to try to get everything that appeals to them. So how do you craft that good, like you say, 90 second interaction? Like you say, you you frame it on stories just like you just described. Absolutely. Um, 
I usually, it depends if it's, if it's one-on-one, so we're saying it's an elevator speech. It's not a networking event, right? Right. If I'm doing, if I'm meeting somebody, like I get a few seconds with them, I'll usually try to figure out what they want. What would make their life better? Because that's what they're really going to care about, right? They don't, why is somebody talking to me? What do they, what would really make their life better? Whether they know what I can give them or not, what's going to improve their life. And then I'm going to ask them some questions right away. So this is a really powerful like idea. Whoever asks the questions is leading the conversation. So if I'm having a discussion, even if it's with somebody, right? Yeah. That is more powerful than me. Right. If I can get them to start answering my questions, I now control where the conversation is going. So through doing that, I can, and I'm, I'm not doing it to be manipulative right, in right. like a mean I get way it. at all. But if I start asking like, you know, Hey King, um, I know you're a speaker. Are you struggling right now or online? How's that going for you? And I might be vulnerable and say, you know, I've had, I've had two events cancel, uh, in the next six weeks. And like, things are, things are different. Like I'm working online. I'm working really hard. How's it going for you? Now I've like brought you in. And when you start answering, if I can add value, not try to sell, if I can add value and here's the, the like clincher, it has to be an open loop. So an open loop means that I add value, but there's, you know, that there's more value beyond it. Uh-huh. So if I tell you, you know, King, I like, I hear you, man. Um, I found this way that I'm like speaking online and I'm not having to pay to be on stages. I'm not getting paid to be there, but I am allowed to sell stuff. And it's led to, you know, I'm doing like 30,000 a month through that. It's a little bit different. What do you do? You lean in because that's, that's really interesting. Right? Uh, So an elevator, (laughs) well, an elevator pitch should no longer be a pitch. The other thing, if you guys have not read uh, pitch anything, I think is what it's called. Hang on. I got it on my shelf. Uh, da, 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 da. Why can't I find it? <laughs> it's he's looking for, a, he's looking for yeah. pitch anything on the shelf. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's up there somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's um, there. The guy wrote two books. One is called pitch anything. And the other is flip the script. Mm-hmm. Um, flip the, the guy is a professional, pitch man that builds pitch decks for multi-million dollar mergers. Um, and they're really well-written books. Um, I would highly recommend them, but he teaches in uh, flip the script. No, I'm sorry. In pitch anything. He teaches what is called a splash reel. And it's what you deliver after they lean in a little bit, then is when you can say something that points to authority. So my splash reel was after you leaned in, in the last six months, I've helped 22 entrepreneurs build webinars that have done more than $3.8 million in sales without hard pitch techniques through using stories. We build 20 to 30 stories per webinar that get people engaged. They love being there. They turn their cameras on. They're interacting with you. And at the end of the day, we have about a 30% close rate. That's like people who hear that are like, yes, I want what you're doing. And they didn't see it coming because I didn't lead with it. If I led with that, if I started right away, Mm -hmm. right. But once they lean in and they've, they've said like, Oh, I want to hear more about that. Subconsciously. Once they say that you have an open door, you get about, about 30 seconds that you can say something before they will turn you off. And you talk, you talk about that on your website. You talk about that, that moment where people lean in, getting them to, and you guys, you guys kind of visualize that. Like when you say something, it's like, Oh, okay. Go. Cause you know what? It, it's, it, this happened with ADT when we, when we bought our, our palatial ranch here several years ago, I was out cleaning out the SUV as I normally do. And this lady in some blue costume shows up. I was not interested. I don't like people. I don't like door to door salespeople. I'm a people person on my terms. And it wasn't that moment, but she took, she, she must've got trained by Steve Warner, ladies and gentlemen, cause I was grumpy. It was hot. And I didn't want to be bothered, but what she did disarmed me. And guess what? A few minutes later, I was signing the ATT contract. <laughs> she give you some iced tea. Was she like, what'd she do? I, I just, it was, it was like, she added, she showed me why I needed ADT. She showed me the value that would add to my family. 
and uh, I, I that's why I took it. I mean, I'm not I'm not uh, in sponsoring ADT unless they're gonna send me a check. But <laughs> but the way she did it, it was short. I was I was kind of rude, and but she got me to lean in. Well, that's you know, the that, that was the thing. The, the, that's the whole thing. And I want to be really clear, like. You could use this stuff and be really manipulative with it. That's not my goal. Like right. at the end of the day, what can you tell somebody that makes their life better? Right. Have you guys enjoyed listening to this? Has this been fun? I think that it has. I mean, you and I have had fun, right? Yeah. Bettina Carey says, this is an awesome interview. You two collectively are dino might. So uh, I love it. Bettina Carey up there in uh, Seattle, Washington, man. Yeah. This is, this has been unbelievable. Would you guys uh, like to have him back? I, I'm telling you, uh, I just want to, I, I, I just want Greg says a hundred. Arthur says, yes, sir. For me to be speechless and I'm a speaker, you know, that's a tough task because I'm always running my mouth. Um, I really do. I really do feel like you have added. I mean, we just tipped the spear, man. We got to get into because I know some folks that are trying to do you help coaches to help them structure their coaching world. Yeah, that's the back end. So we build. So the point where we start a webinar, we start with the offer, right? right? So the offer is usually somewhere between 397 and 1997. Mm -hmm. But you've got to have a place to ascend people after that. The real money in coaching and consulting is having a big back-end deal that is six months to a year long. But you can't just start somebody off there because they're not going to, most people are not going to buy because they don't know, like, and trust you and they shouldn't. Right. You start with a lower price offer that is somewhere a couple weeks long. I don't, I don't sell courses. Um, I sell done with you's that are six weeks. So we'll work together for six weeks to do something to build out your hero's journey. You'll, by the end of that, you'll know whether you like working with me. Cause right. I don't want, I don't, I, in the very beginning of my career, I sold a gentleman that was a doctor on working with me for a year. Let me tell you by week four, I hated showing up to that call. <laughs> you was done with him, wasn't you? <laughs> oh my, and he didn't, I don't think he really liked me either to be fair, because yeah. we were from very different worlds and we had different opinions on things, but he had paid me, I think he paid me $28,000, if I remember correctly, in 2015. And I was like, I'm not giving any of that money back. Like, we're going to sit here and figure this out. And he was like, well, I'm going to get value from this. So we just like, we worked together. I mean, it, it, wow. we worked together for the year, but it wasn't fun. And that's, so yes, I help coaches. I help them build out their offers. There's, we could, we could spend an hour talking about how to build out an offer. Sure. Um, but we'll do that another time. Yeah, we will, man. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think the uh, I think the uh, the 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 gods that be are sending us the music to tell us we got to close our mouth for the night. And so, and so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of a very, very, very exhaustively powerful uh, impacting life twenty four seven episode. I have been blessed to have in our virtual studio Steve Warner. You can go to steve.how. He if you just type in dot how, I bet you Steve's face gonna show up because he <laughs> bought them all. <laughs> and uh man, a tremendous, tremendous, really practical. Uh, uh you know, like I feel like I, we can just take what he said tonight and if we just start there, just just get started. And I would love for everyone who is an entrepreneur, you're trying to get your business, you're not seeing the results, your coaching business, your your webinars. People are falling asleep or leaving them. Man, get those things supercharged. How to make conversions. Because a lot of times what where I'm seeing is people are doing things and it's free, but they're not, you know what I mean? Your time is is money. I know, and listen, it's not all about money, but if you're an entrepreneur, you're in this to, to make a difference and to make a living. Okay, so don't ever forget that. Sometimes when I speak for chicken dinners, I, I kindly remind them that chicken don't put no gas in the tank. <laughs> and then the next time they have me there, they come in with a little bit different. And so, Steve, what I would like for you to do, I offer this to all of our guests to close out. I'm giving you a minute, brother. I only usually give them 30 seconds. I want you to give a word of encouragement to our entrepreneurs and, and speakers and all of them out there, uh, you know, in this tough environment. Give a word of encouragement. The floor is yours. Absolutely. Thank you so much. If you guys are entrepreneurs, if you guys are business owners, if you guys are coaches, you guys change lives and I know that it's a roller coaster. Like this show has been great. I have my days where things aren't so great. I have days where I have bad clients. I have days where things go wrong as well. I also have great days at the end of the day. 
we are just a speck of sand in a whirlwind of life. And a month from now, a year from now, wherever you're at right now, you're not going to remember it. What you are going to remember is how you made other people feel. You guys are here because you want to change the world. I'm going to read you a quote. Uh, this comes from the Prince, the Machiavellian Prince. Make mistakes of ambition, not mistakes of sloth. Develop the strength to do bold things, not the strength to suffer mediocrity. You guys do what you do because you feel called to do it. At the end of the day, commitment does not care how you feel. The people that you are serving do not care how you feel. You have to pick yourself up off the floor. You have to put a smile on your face and you should because what we do is fun. You could be working on a line job somewhere, making 25 grand a year. Instead, we get to do this. So anytime that you have an ups and downs, remember you can have an up and down anywhere. Um, you guys are here because you want to change the world. You guys are changing the world. Even if you just impact one life today, make a difference in that person who is giving your coffee at Starbucks, is checking you out at the grocery store to that person on Facebook. You made their day. Remember that. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the man with the clarity hat that I'm going to find a way to get from him has really just spoken words of life into us. Man, I got to go back and write down those things that he said. <laughs> Steve, you know, I, it, you get those guests, you get those people that you connect with. And really, that's what this whole journey has been for us. Like, like most of the guests that I have, many of the guests, let me say, we connect and we collaborate way outside of the podcast. And, you know, you, you just meet those people that you know that's like, okay, we got the same vibe, you know, brother from another mother kind of thing. And Steve Warner, uh, Steve Howe, I hope that you would go and connect with him. And he gave us some rich jewels tonight. Begin to work on them and go to his website. Man, he got some free tips. I've already signed up for a couple of his things that I'm going to steal from Steve and use them and make 25K the next event I do. Uh, there you go. He, Greg says, commitment does not care how you feel make somebody's day that is so true so true so steve thank you so much for your time brother i'm gonna send you a calendly link when i send you the show stuff tonight and just reschedule yourself a couple more times throughout this year okay bro awesome king has been so great thanks for having me on all right thank you for being with us man we'll talk to you again real soon and thank you i i'll, I'll let you out of here uh thank you for being with us steve Ladies and gentlemen, man, that was a that was a powerful show. Greetings, Augie from Las Vegas. I think my man that I had on tonight was um, from uh, Las Vegas. Yes, Greg, he's a professional speaker, so we definitely want to have him on Midnight Motivation. That has really turned into something that's like our little our little project that we're working on, man. I think Steve could come and really bring the heat for that. I got to make some adjustments to get him there because he's in the he's not sitting around waiting for people to call him uh he's in high demand so uh augie we love you man haven't seen you in a while hope you're doing well i do follow you on facebook as you guys know augie is our trucker who travels all over the world keeping supplies on the shelf and uh every now and then augie will pop in when he's not driving and say hello so greg thank you thank you for all the tuned in thank you for uh all of your support i love you guys I think we need to say that more because let me tell you something life life is precious y'all you guys mean a lot to me giving me the opportunity to have this platform and like people actually listen to it i know that every night of the week that we have this show monday tuesday and thursday it's all it's something different it's something new. It's something fresh. We designed it that way. I could have just had a show about juvenile delinquency, or I could have had a show about homelessness as a kid. I could have had a show singular, you know, singular focused, but life is not like that. Those people in New York did, did not know a week ago that their subways would be getting flooded. Those folks in, in Louisiana didn't know that life was going to come and destroy their homes. So on our show, we try to deal with things that are happening in life. And I know there are people out here in this virtual space that are trying to navigate and find their way. So we bring people on that can be an inspiration and an impact to you. That's why we do this, ladies and gentlemen. Steve.how, please go connect with him. And if you'd like to become a sponsor of Impacting Life to help us do what we do, 
our sponsorship is available. This is sponsorship season. It's open season, ladies and gentlemen. Just go to clkingspeaker.com and scroll down to the bottom and become a sponsor. Help us continue to build. This is a place where people want to come. We bring in professionals, highly performing professionals. We also bring in the common people from Joe from around the corner. We want to welcome everyone to this show, but we also want it to be a place that they want to be. We've put a lot of money and effort into putting together a professional product. A little bit ago, I was sitting back and I was listening to my friend. I was listening to him like this. And Greg is so mindful of our image and what we're presenting. He sent me a message because he's always watching the show, making sure things are right. He says, hey, uncross your arms. That sends a bad body language. And I was just sitting there chilling. But I was like, man, that's so right. We always want to we want to present the best environment for our guests. And I hope that we added some value to Steve. They definitely have added value to us. Greg, I love you, man. You are truly just one of a kind, brother. That's why you eat at the table first. Thank you to our Impact Life 24-7 team, Danny, Mike, Katrina, and Greg. We love you. We'll talk to you again on Monday. Open Mic Monday. We'll be back here live exclusively on Impact Life 24-7. Have a great weekend.